Yes, thank you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, <clears throat> and I will give you rest. This was the first hit song I had with uh, Shades of the Cross, Come Unto Me. So that's now available uh, on iTunes and on uh, uh, the YouTube channel. So we'll listen to uh, some more of that later. I uh, just want to let you know that once again I'm bringing my music ministry back to the forefront. I just don't do prophetic ministry and teaching, I also do music. So that's coming back to the forefront and you find much more of that on my Facebook, Twitter, and my YouTube channels, okay? The name of this song is called Come Unto Me. Oh Lord, I still got my gloves on, my weightlifting gloves. Okay, so uh, that's available on, um, again, iTunes and on UT, YouTube. Uh, and so I just want to let you know I'm bringing my music ministry back to the forefront. All right, Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I know everybody's excited for the game. I know it's been a long weekend. I know all that. But we still want to take time to honor God and release the word of the Lord, okay? And then you can go enjoy the game, enjoy your family, and have the best day possible. Okay? Let's start with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you for your grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of your glory, O oh Lord. Uh, Lord, forgive me for any sin. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my heart. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill my mind. Fill my mouth. Oh God, fill every part of me so that you can breathe through me. Oh God, so that what you want spoken will be spoken, and so that your saints will be edified, and that you might be glorified, and that the demons might be terrified. We thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, amen and amen. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is <clears throat> a season of hope. One more time, today's prophetic word is a season of hope. Let me release that prophetic word to you. And then we'll dive into the scripture to be sure we have the meaning and the understanding. For thus saith the Lord, for behold, my people, I have brought you into your 2020 season. Yea, I have even brought you into a season of hope. I therefore wish to polish you and shape you like a sharp sword or polished arrow in my hand. So that when I send you out into the world, you have a global impact. Therefore, my people, I release unto you a spirit of training that you might receive the refinement and the fine-tuning and the polishing that I want to do in your life. And when you allow me to fine-tune you and polish you and make you what I want you to be, a sharp sword and a polished arrow, and I send you out into the world and you open your mouth, you will have global impact. You will bring hope unto your own soul. You will bring hope unto your household and you will bring hope unto the nations, that all may know that there is still hope in me, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. That word's been burning in my heart all day, so I'm glad to finally be able to release that. <clears throat> so let's dive into that to understand what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. <clears throat> he said that when our 2020 season, which means the season of perfect vision, it means the season of clarity, it means the season of perfect will of God, it means a season of double portion, but today the Holy Ghost is letting us know it's also a season of hope. And so God wants to fine-tune us. What does that mean? That means that God wants to help burn off, polish off, get rid of anything in our lives that's still carnal, that's of the flesh, that's not like him, so that when he sends us into the world, we can have the impact, repeat the impact that he wants us to have. Let's look at the first part of that scripture. The first part of that scripture is found in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 2. Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Remember, I tell you all the time, the difference between a major prophet and a minor prophet. Okay? It does not mean, with minor prophets, it does not mean that their books are less important. It just means that their books are smaller. And when you're a major prophet, it does not mean their messages are more important. It just means their books are larger. 
Okay, so Isaiah is one of the major prophets of the Old Testament because Isaiah wrote a lot. Okay, so we're going to look at chapter 49 and verse 2. Let's start with the NIV translation. Isaiah 49, 2. He hath made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. Wow. Berean Study Bible, he had made he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. He hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me like a polished arrow. He hid me in his quiver. Now, two times in that verse, that verse talks about hiding. You know what that means? That means I know some of you listening to me, listening to me have been anxious to burst forth. You've been anxious to move forward. Maybe you feel like your life's in a bit of a rut. Maybe you feel like you haven't really been, you haven't really gotten to the place that God wants you to get to. But two times in that verse... It says, he hid me, Isaiah 49, 2, he hid me in the shadow of his hand, and he hid me in his quiver. What that means in a practical sense is that God is going to keep you hidden until you're ready. And you're not going to be ready until the Lord says you're ready. Not when you say you're ready, and not when people say you're ready, or not when people want you to do whatever. It's when the Lord says you're ready. The Bible says he hid me, okay? So that's why some of you still haven't gotten that breakthrough, you still haven't gotten to where you think you want to be, because the Lord is hiding you. But why is he hiding you? He's hiding you both in the shadow of his hand, and he's hiding you in his quiver. Like Hawkeye, a green arrow, you carry arrows in a quiver. That's what you call the thing you carry, carry arrows in a quiver. He hid me in his quiver. So in other words, the Lord has me back here, ready to shoot me, but he hasn't shot me yet. Why? Answer is in the same verse. He hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. That means that God is polishing your words. God is polishing your pastoral anointing, your evangelical anointing, your prophetic anointing, so that when you release it, it's going to cut. Because the word of God is sharp and it cuts to the heart. It cuts between the bone and the marrow. So in other words, you'll have impact because there ain't nothing worse than somebody trying to preach or prophesy or sing and they have no impact. Did you know that? Nothing worse than somebody up there struggling and they're trying to say what thus saith the Lord and it has no impact. Trying to preach the word of God and it has no impact. So God says he's going to make that mouth like a sharp sword so that when, it go, when that word goes forth, it's going to cut. It's going to cut straight to people's hearts. It's going to cut, cut straight down into their guts. It's going to cut straight down into what makes people tick. That's what God is doing while he's hiding you. Also, it says... Uh, he made me like a polished arrow, but he hid me in his quiver. So that means God has me back here because the thing that holds arrows is a quiver. That means God has me back here and he's ready to draw me at any time. But when he does draw me and he shoots me out into the world, he wants me to have impact. Okay? Because when God shoots an arrow, it's straight and it's true and it hits his target every time. But he said he's made me a polished arrow. So I'm not dull. So that tip is sharp. So those feathers cut through the air. So that body, that arrow is streamlined and aerodynamic. So that when God finally does release you, it has the impact that he wants. You see that? Now what's that got to do with a season of hope? Because if there was ever a time where people on the face of the earth needed hope, it would be now. We got a uh, in America, because I'm broadcasting from America, we got an impeachment trial going on. We just unfortunately had the very sad death of Kobe Bryant last weekend and, and other people too, not just Kobe, other people in the helicopter, but other people have died since then. But people are just dying left and right, people of all ages. Um, we have so many different situations that we're dealing with, with our country being on fire. We have the Brexit situation with the UK leaving the European Union and people want to know where to look for hope? Where is there any hope left in the world? And Jesus Christ is saying, there's hope in me. But we, his servants, have to go out there and release that message. We are the ones, his prophets, his apostles, his pastors, his evangelists, his teachers, his body. We are the ones that have to let the world know that there's still hope in him. So God wants you to be able to speak strong and sure so that when people hear that anointed word, they know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. And you can't do that if you're not anointed. 
You can't do that if you're not polished. You can't do that if you're not prepared. You can't be up there a hebe a That's not going to do anybody any good. Okay? Now let's look at the second part of that verse. Jeremiah 29.11. Now Jeremiah was also another Old Testament major prophet. Okay? Jeremiah's book is either the largest book in the Bible or the second largest. Because Psalms is like three or four. Jeremiah is like one or two in terms of I have to look up the actual word count again. But Jeremiah is either the largest book in the Bible or the second largest. So Jeremiah had a lot to say. Uh, another major prophet from the Old Testament. Let's look at this verse, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And Jeremiah says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Wow. Wow. If there was ever a time where people needed that message from the Lord, because a lot of people don't want to turn to God because they've been turned off by religion, but God is not talking through religion. God is talking about himself. Okay, there's no denominations in the Bible. There's no Baptists. There's no Presbyterians. There's no Lutherans. There's no Methodists. There's no United Methodists. There's no, no Pentecostals. There's no Charismatics in the scripture. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's what the Bible says. And so the Lord is not talking about religion or denominationalism. But a lot of people have been hurt by organized religion. And a lot of people have been hurt in church. And God is trying to say, that's not who I am. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Not your denomination or your religion. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. So that means God wants to bring you prosperity. That's not just money. That's peace of mind. That's right relationships. That's peace when you go to, amen, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Peace when you go to sleep at night, living in the right house, living in the right state, having the right job, uh, having healthy children, ha creating a legacy to leave behind you. That's prosperity. Plans I have to prosper you and not to harm you, so key. So many people don't want to come to the Lord because they're afraid of what he's going to say. He says, I'm not going to harm you. How do I know that? Because Jesus is the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The good shepherd is gentle. The good shepherd is kind. The good shepherd wants the best for you. He wants you to have life in fullest measure. And the good shepherd died. Now remember, when the Lord reaches out his hand to you, he's got the proof of his love literally in his body because he's got the nail scars of the cross in both of his hands. He's got the print of the crown of thorns on his forehead. He's got the spear print in his side, and he's got the nail print in both of his feet because they put Jesus' feet on top of each other and drove one nail through them. It wasn't two nails on the feet. It was one nail with his feet crossed. So when you see Jesus Christ, he's actually got the proof in his body that he loves you, that he does not want to harm you. And I can't tell you the number of people that are afraid to go to church because they're afraid they're going to be harmed. That's a bunch of religious people. That's a bunch of insensitive religious people that don't know the Lord. So the Lord is speaking directly to you. And he's saying, not only do I want to prosper you, but I don't want to harm you. Can you see that? If, people, if there was ever a time when people needed to know that, then when they came to God, they could have hope, they could have prosperity, and they could have safety. They don't have to worry about being harmed. And then he says to give you a future and a hope. God says, I'm going to put something in front of you that's worth living for. One more time. I like the way Bishop Jakes says it. Bishop Jakes says that when people commit suicide, they commit suicide over their past, over something that's already happened, over something you can't do nothing about. And when you commit suicide, you're killing a person you never met. You haven't met future you yet. So don't kill yourself. Don't give up. God says, I want to give you a future. God says, in your future, you are a better you than you are right now. You're in a better circumstance than you are right now. He says, a future and a hope. Because you've got to have hope to make you get up out to bed in the morning. Did you know that? If you don't have any hope for the future, you're not going to have any power in the present. You've got to have something in front of you that's worth getting up for. And God says, that's what I want to give you. God said, when I'm in heaven... When I'm making my plans for you, my plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and give you a reason to get up in the morning. And if there was ever a time 
where the world needed that message. Because if you think about it, everything that we used to think of as stable is unstable now. The schools, the law enforcement, the government, families, hospitals, people health. We've got a worldwide virus going around now. Where can you find peace? Where can you find safety? We've got people dying left and right for, for just no good reason. Where can you find peace where you can find safety? God is saying, it's in me. It's in Jesus Christ, the creator, the redeemer, the savior, who when he reaches out his hand to you, he's reaching out his hands with proof in his hands that he's not going to harm you. He took the harm so he can give you hope. Can you see that? So if there was ever a time we need that message, it's right now. So, okay, I feel another prophetic word coming. So therefore, my people, listen to me. Let me shape you and mold you and finish my perfect work in your lives. And I will send you forth shortly. I will send you forth speedily. I will send you forth mightily that you might impact with the world with the message of hope and turn the hearts of men and women, boys and girls all over the planet back to me, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. That's what the Lord wants us to do. That's what God's been getting you ready for. And for those of you that, again, that feel like, like I said at the top of the broadcast, you feel like maybe you're hidden. You feel like maybe nobody knows who I am. You feel like I've been serving God a long time, but I should have been further by now. I should have made more headway. God is saying, I'm hiding you because I'm polishing you. I'm hiding you because I'm making that, that sword in your mouth sharp. But the Lord just said through that prophetic word, I'm going to send you forth speedily. Let me finish doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to reach back and I'm going to get you out that quiver. And I'm going to shoot you forth because I want you to bring that hope. And when you release the word of God unto hope, you're going to bring hope to your own soul. You're going to bring hope to your own household. And you're going to bring hope to the nations so that everyone might know, amen, that there's still hope in Jesus. There's still hope in Jesus. It's not too late. It's not too bad. And we haven't sunk too low that the arm of the Lord can't reach down and restore. There's still hope in Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. If you got any prayer requests for me, put them up on the screen. When you see me close my eyes, I'm praying in tongues and I'm asking the Lord, are there any more prophetic words? Are there any financial words? Is there any physical healing that needs to go forth? And does anybody need deliverance? Does anybody need an unclean spirit broken off them? So if you got any prayer requests, put them on the screen for me now. Otherwise, I'm going to begin to pray in tongues. Okay, here we go. All right, the word of the Lord. Jerome Prayer, I have been blue. Okay, all right, I'll play for it. Repons right now, God, that you would give them a lifting of the spirits, that you would give them uh, the oil of joy and gladness for the garment of despair, oh God, that you would give them beauty for ashes, that you would put a crown on their head and give them a future and a hope and give them a reason of oh God. Let them see a fresh vision of you, a fresh vision of your future, that they might move forward with joy and gladness. In Jesus' name, we declare it and decree it, and it is so. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, what that means, you have to expect it. You have to expect the Lord to show up and give you the hope and the joy that we just prayed for. Whenever we pray to God for something, we must believe that we receive it while we're praying. Don't ever pray to God and just be saying words that has no power. When you pray to the Lord, believe that he hears you, and he's going to answer what you asked. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. I'm so excited about 2020. Uh, as you've seen me say uh, a dozen times, I've got my prophetic devotional out. So for the first quarter, and it's already blessing people. And again, I, I'm not bragging. I'm talking about that's the Lord's idea. The Lord gave me that idea to give people a prophetic devotional where you could study a scripture every day. Meditate that scripture. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you about it. And then write down journal style what he says. And then there's a section at the bottom where you can come back later and write down when the word of the Lord came to pass. Do you know why? Because that's how you grow prophetically. That's what strengthens your faith. 
especially if you just starting out in the prophetic, because it can be kind of intimidating if you're new to it. You need to write down what God says to you on a date with a date on it and then come back at a later date and write down when that word came to pass. And when you see how God has brought his word to come to pass in your life, it strengthens your faith. So the next time the Lord gives you a word or the next time you get in a situation, you can look back at that prior victory. So this book is journal style. I'm so excited about it. I'm so proud of it. I'm so happy. Uh, I think I have a copy here. I'd have to go get it. Uh, wait a minute, because I do want to show it to you. Wait a minute. I know I should have had with me, I know. But I keep things in different parts of my house, so there you have it. So here's that journal I told you about. Here's my prophetic, my daily prophetic journal. I know it's backwards. I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. But here's my daily prophetic journal, okay? This is January, February, and March. So, and once again, like I just told you, there's a scripture every day for you to read. Three different translations. Then you meditate on it, you write down what the Lord is telling you, and then you come back later and write down when the Lord answered that prophecy. And that's how you strengthen your faith, okay? Daily Prophetic Devotion. Now you say, how can I get it? I put the link on my Facebook of Live. I'm on Facebook Live. I put the link on my Twitter, PDTSOTC. I put the link on YouTube, Prophet David Taylor, and you can get it off my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org, okay? Also, I'm relaunching my music ministry. Um, I have been doing music actually longer than I've been doing anything else. So this is one of the songs. This is actually the, the first hit I have with my band. It's called Come Unto Me. So um, I have a Patreon for my Shades of the Cross project because there's a whole bunch of things I want to do. I want to create... A summer recording choir. That might be kind of loud. You might be having a problem hearing me. I want to create a summer recording choir. I have singles that I'm dropping pretty much year round. See, so I'm a prophet, I'm an author, and I'm a, mu a musician. So I will put links for this once again on Facebook, on Twitter, um, so you can check out my music ministry and so you can support me on Patreon because it takes a lot of money to do a music ministry. Okay, it takes a lot of money to get rehearsal facilities, recording facilities. Uh, we got to practice the stuff. We got to mix it and master it. I got to distribute it. So I know how to do it. I've been doing it my all, my whole life, but it's very expensive. But my music is prophetic music. It's designed to minister to your spirit and to put the word of God in your head. Okay, so it's not just noise for noise's sake. It's designed to speak to your spirit and speak to your soul. Okay, so I'll put links on all my channels. So you can go to my Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash Shades of the Cross. That's the name of my band. Okay? Or you can look up David Taylor and Shades of the Cross on Patreon. Okay? So I'll put all those links uh, if you'd like to bless me there because it takes a lot to make that happen. Okay? So, so God bless you. I, I love this song. So God bless you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching me live. Thank you for watching me on the replay. God bless you to those of you that are listening on the podcast because this broadcast is done live. It's Facebook Live, uh, Periscope, Twitter, YouTube, and a podcast because we want to get the word of God out to as many people as we can. All that's on my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. Okay? So God bless you. Um, have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Um, have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the rest of the day. And remember that God is getting us ready to release that prophetic message of hope to the world. So we're going to wait on God and let him have his finished work in our lives. And then God is going to shoot us forth. And we're going to be able to let people know, men and women, boys and girls all over this planet, that there is still hope in Jesus Christ. God bless you. And I will see you same time next week.